What's up, Grapple Gang? I've got some exposing to do today. Can you guys believe that this mistake made it onto TV? Or this one? Or this one? Like, dude, look at this. Look at this mistake right here. We're gonna be covering all of these mistakes and more in today's video, so let's get right into it. Here are a bunch of SpongeBob mistakes. Come on, SpongeBob! It should be against the law to have to write an essay on such a super sailorific sunshiny day. But I must press onward. In the completion of this essay, I'll be one step closer to my driver's license. <laughs> One of my favorite episodes of SpongeBob is procrastination. And it's because I think we can all relate to this episode. We've had plenty of times where we have homework or just other things we need to get done and we'll find any reason possible to not do it. And that's exactly what SpongeBob does in this episode. It seems the animators might have been procrastinating a little as well though, as there's two really bad mistakes in this episode. Here's the first one in Grapple Gang. Try to comment the mistake before I actually reveal it and break it down, all right? I'll see you in the comments. Roll that footage. <gasps> Pesky particles. <laughs> I swallowed one. <laughs> Water. <laughs> That was a close one. All right, so mistake number one. Were you guys able to catch it? Don't worry, because cartoon Cory's got you. But during this scene right here where SpongeBob is at the sink and we see him drinking water, it happens really, really quickly. And it's only for a couple of seconds, but two parts of his black belt right here turn yellow. I don't think I need to tell you guys, but SpongeBob's black belt is always, you know, black. So this right here is some sort of layering issue. I'm showing it again and kind of looping it and just, yeah, it's, it's not supposed to look like that. SpongeBob, I think you need a new belt. Belt, buddy. That or maybe some new animators? Nah, 2D animation's hard. But here's mistake number two. You get back here this instant! Pants! <laughs> now this one I'm sure you guys caught, especially if we paused it at the right frame, but before SpongeBob is locked out of his house in this episode, as the door slams shut for about a split second, look, our favorite yellow boy is just missing his mouth. It's only for a split second, so it's not that big of a deal. It's not like his mouth is missing for the entire scene. It's still a mistake, and it's quite the funny one. Like, look at SpongeBob here with no mouth. Crazy. You know what's also crazy, though? The mistakes in this next episode we're gonna cover, so let's keep it moving, Grapple Gang. Yeah, I don't understand. I think Mr. Krabs is saying that he'd like to hit you with a rake. Goodness! No! No, wait! He wants to take you on a date! Uh, what do you say? <laughs> I say you have a way with words, Mr. Krabs. Next up, we have Krusty Love. And this episode is all about Mr. Krabs' dying love for Mrs. Puff. The only problem is, is that Mr. Krabs, anytime he spends money on Mrs. Puff, it causes the dude to go crazy. Like, he is cheap. You know he's the type of dude trying to split on the first date. Gotta love him for it, though. He's kind of a King. Anyways, though, we're not here for all that. Here are the two mistakes in this episode. They're spicy. Let's start with mistake number one. Roll that footage. Oh, Mr. Krabs, this dinner has been so wonderful. You're spoiling me, Mr. Krabs. I mean, foot rubs between courses, imported music. Yeah, this one's like hilarious. So when Mr. Krabs first goes on his date with Mrs. Puff, at first we can see him wearing this fancy outfit, all right? My boy is looking smooth, he's looking good. Like keep him away from my girlfriend, Mr. Krabs. You're looking good in that suit. But here's the thing, as the scene progresses, right? While they're out on the date, Mr. Krabs is wearing that fancy outfit the entire time. But for one scene, like one shot, look, the animators messed up and drew Mr. Krabs in his regular outfit. When in the shot before this, as you can see here, he's wearing the fancy clothes. And then second, Seconds after we see this shot with the mistake in it, he's back to the fancy club. So totally a mistake. It's only for one frame, but Mr. Krabs should not be wearing his regular outfit here. It's definitely really funny though. Like, I don't know how they made that mistake, but here's mistake number two from Krusty Love. What's that smell? Who register? 49 oh, 8 That's a penny 
short. This one is easy to miss. Like it took me and the grapple team, the editor, a couple of times of watching this scene to actually catch the mistake. Like it's hidden. But when Mr. Krabs over here rushes over to the cash register in the clips you guys just saw, look, they just didn't draw his legs. Now it might have been for like comedic effect or something, but I mean, come on, he should have his legs here. They're just missing and that's a mistake. Like Mr. Krabs needs those legs. Wild dude. So many mistakes coming up though, guys. Like the mistakes coming up are going to blow your brain. So let's keep it rolling. Let's head over to our next episode. Real quick though, just saying, I respond to the comments of all subscribers. So if you subscribe to the channel right now and leave a comment, I'll respond for sure within the next like two or three days. Just make sure you subscribe because it shows me in YouTube studio if you're subscribed or not. Anyways though, let's head over to that next episode. Um, what the heck? I can't just walk away during a show. You work too hard for a kid your age, so I'm taking you here. Camp Kid, where kids can camp and not be directors slash producers. All right, so listen, I know the Patrick Star Show is a whole other show, but I mean, it literally stars Patrick, who is like a main character in SpongeBob. Plus, it's not like we're gonna actually watch the show. We're just gonna expose some mistakes. So we're gonna go back to regular SpongeBob, but let's talk about this new episode of the Patrick Star Show really quickly. The episode is, is there a director in the house? The mistake is very tricky though. So I'm gonna play the clip and then I'll come back and explain it. All right, roll that footage. <laughs> Ready on your cue, Patrick. What if I was attacked by a Viking? <laughs> and what about another Viking? And break for lunch in ten. Go for Viking two. <laughs> Okay, so listen closely, Grapple Game, because this is a very complicated mistake. So at the very beginning of this episode, Patrick is doing his routine, and Squidina is working in the background. And as we can see right here, there are two Vikings on her screen. There's Viking 1 right here, who has like a purplish pink body, and then Viking number 2 over here, which has like a green body. And they're literally titled like that, Viking 1 and Viking 2. So what's supposed to happen is that Squidina lets Viking 1 out to fight Patrick, all right? And we see that happen. We see the computer screen flicker out and we see the same Viking that was on that screen come out and beat up Patrick. Now, remember, Viking number two is a different color than Viking number one and eventually gets to the point where Squidina sends out Viking number two. So we should see this green Viking right here come out, Viking number two, since the pink one already came out because he's Viking number one. Well, if you look closely when Viking number two comes out, it's actually the exact same design as Viking number one. The green one just never comes out, which makes no sense when the green one is Viking number two. So I'm over explaining it. It's not that big of a deal, but hopefully you guys caught the mistake here. It's a funny one. Let's head over to another episode though that has like a much more blatant mistake. Like the mistake in this next episode is really bad. Let's keep it moving. Hey, Patrick, you want to play hide and seek? <gasps> Do I have to know what hide and seek is in order to play it? No, <laughs> what hide and seek is in order to play it. Come on, Patrick, quit fooling around. We've played hide and seek dozens of times. Our first episode for today is hide and then what happens. I'm gonna get right into the first mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Looking for my friend Patrick. He a big roundish fellow with a pointy head? Exactly! Haven't seen him. Okay, well, thanks anyway. Wait, wait, wait! Is he pink? Yeah. Well, in that case, he's sitting right over there. Uh, Patrick, it really is you. My name is Patrick. Patrick, not star. You are the one I'm seeking! No, I'll never find Patrick. He wins it, I... Seek. He wins, he wins. So he wins. What's so bad about that? This one's pretty bad, and it actually happens fairly commonly in SpongeBob. But when SpongeBob says, He wins at hide and seek, he wins, he wins. One of his eyes actually partially turns yellow, as you can see right here. I don't think you guys need me to tell you that SpongeBob's eyes are normally white, but in this one shot of this episode right here, it's kinda yellow, which is pretty bad. SpongeBob, you need to go and see a doctor, broski. That's not okay. But what's also not okay is the other mistake in this episode. Take a look at this, guys. This? <laughs> what are you doing with that magnifier? Looking for Patrick. Come on, you ain't gonna find him with that sad little thing. Are you sure it's okay for me to use this? I keep it here for emergencies. Thanks again, Sandy. Be careful! 
So a little bit of science for you guys. Submarines, right? I'm showing random submarine footage right now. They need to be in water to move, all right? They move in water. Well, take a look at this scene and hide then what happens. As this submarine is able to move around in Sandy's tree dome, which as I mentioned before, wouldn't be possible. There is no water in Sandy's tree dome, which is why SpongeBob and Patrick have to wear these water helmets. And to make things worse, if you look, the submarine shows bubbles being made from the propeller when they're inside a waterless tree dome. So just, yeah, that's a mistake and just kind of a messy scene, but guys, check out this mistake. This one's even worse. One, two, three, four. Why is he counting? I guess I'll just go home. Maybe later he'll want to play a game or something. Now, where is he hiding? Way too obvious. This one's kind of funny. So right here is Con Street. You guys know this street. It's iconic. SpongeBob, Squidward, and Patrick's houses all are on this street. But in Hide and Then What Happens, when SpongeBob looks around and sees Patrick's house, um, neither Squidward nor SpongeBob's houses are shown, which is totally a mistake. I mean, again, look at this shot of Con Street. They should be right there. And even if it isn't a mistake, the animators are very lazy for not drawing them. So just, yeah, a bit of a messy episode, guys. But stay tuned. As I'm saving some of the best mistakes for the ending of the video, so stay tuned, all right? Let's keep it moving. Come in! Hey, SpongeBob! Wanna see my new shoes? Let's see what they look like on your feet. Wouldn't you rather see them on my hands? Okay, and we can wear gloves on our feet and hats on our captain's quarters, too! Uh, actually, I have a confession. I don't know how to tie my shoelaces. Let's go back in time to old SpongeBob, the Steven Hillenburg era, and talk about some mistakes in the episode, Your Shoes Untied. I love this episode, it's a good one. Any classic SpongeBob I love. Anyways though, here's the first mistake. Roll the footage. We're going to the chum bucket. Wait, wait, don't go. <laughs> oh yeah, we are definitely out of here. Yes, wait. This one is really, really funny. So guys, when the customers start to leave the Krusty Krab in this scene, this character right here, known as Incidental 67, wears a pair of pants that are similar to SpongeBob's, okay? You can see them right here. They're kind of fresh. Look at this guy, Jack in SpongeBob style, stealing his drip. Here's the problem though, guys. When the customers leave, this Incidental's pants just disappear. Where are they? At first, he's wearing these pants right here, but then in this scene, they're just gone. And again, just like Incidental F9, I highly doubt he took off his pants in the middle of the crusty crab. The burgers ain't that good, guys. But anyways, let's keep it moving and head over to another mistake in this episode. This one's pretty bad. What's the hold up? Now, any hardcore SpongeBob fan like myself knows that this character right here is Old Man Walker. And I mean, it's in his name. He's old. He's an old man. I love the guy, but he's a senior citizen. But I guess whoever made this episode kind of forgot about this. Because when Old Man Walker says, What's the hold up? He talks in a young man's voice. Here's a clip right here showing his old voice again from another episode. Locked in again. He's old, right? As you just heard. Well, listen to his voice again in this episode. What's the Hold up. Dude is like a young man again somehow. I don't know how this happened, but this was definitely a mistake, guys. This one's kind of bad, but hey, that's not it for today's video. Let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. Let's go. <laughs> what is that thing, SpongeBob? A giant pencil. Go touch it. It is a giant pencil, Patrick. Let's draw some giant pictures with it. So first up is the classic episode, Frankendoodle. I love this episode. Shout out to Doodle Bob over here. Wow. This guy's crazy. This man's a menace. Now this episode has a ton of mistakes, but keep your eyes peeled for this first one. Roll footage. Careful with that thing. Who knows what'll happen? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Doodle, it looks like this is a draw. You've made your point. 
no matter. I was voted most artistic in high school. Ouch! SpongeBob, you're gonna pay for that. Uh okay, so I already know that this one is going to need some explaining. So here's the thing. When SpongeBob and DoodleBob are in SpongeBob's living room and the initial shot of the TV, the images next to it are just shots of barren landscapes, as you can see here. Then in the next shot, they randomly change and are now images of Patrick, SpongeBob, and the pineapple, respectively. Then they change for a third time and now they're just solid colors. And then for the fourth time they change, they just go back to the images of Spongebob, Patrick, and the Pineapple. And then guys, believe it or not, in a fifth shot, they go back to the solid colors. So this back and forth happens multiple times. And pretty much just as you can see, these shots over here just constantly change. Really weird mistake. Let's keep it rolling though and head over to another episode. Hey, you kids get off of my lawn! That's right, run, crabs! I'll freeze you out of business, and I'll do it with your precious thermostat! What the? Oh no! Code Red! Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship! Season 5's Crabs a la Mode is another interesting episode. It's not my favorite, but it's not the worst. But I do like Plankton's scheme in this episode. Instead of explaining it, I'll let these clips show you what he does. It's very interesting. <laughs> That crusty old barnacle might keep me from his secret formula, but I'd like to see him serve a Krabby Patty when I'm done with this place. A little rain must fall. Well, maybe it is personal. I'm touching your thermostat! I'm touching your thermostat! Locks a bit sticky this morning. Plankton quite literally turned the Krusty Krab into a winter wonderland. At one point, people are literally ice skating around the Krusty Krab, which looks kind of fun, but I don't think that's the place to be doing that. This episode, as I said though, has some mistakes. Here's the first one. I'm not giving up yet, Krabs. I've still got my secret weapon. It was I who froze the Krusty Krab, you see? <laughs> Nobody messes with me thermostat! So as you guys seen, a big plot point in this episode is Plankton changing the thermostat of the Krusty Krab. That's how it gets all icy in there. But as you've seen in the clips, he changes the temperature of the thermostat again. But how would he have done this? Because the thermostat freezes. We literally see it get ice on it. It's frozen, so I don't think it'd be working very well. So yeah, another mistake here, and here's mistake number two. Is it cold in here? Hi, Mr. Krabs. Wow. Ah. So speaking of frozen objects, as you guys can see, there is one shot where the cash register is frozen, but then throughout the rest of the episode and every other scene, the cash register is no longer frozen. So a bit of a continuity error, but hey, mistakes happen. You guys know what time it is though? It's time to talk about the random mistake of the day. Will we take a quick break from SpongeBob to talk about mistakes in another random cartoon that we don't talk about all that often, usually suggested by you guys. We're gonna go right back to SpongeBob, don't worry, but today we're gonna do The Loud House, more specifically Cassie Grandas, which is like a spin-off of The Loud House. I actually really like this show, it's good. Again, we're gonna go back to SpongeBob, but stay tuned, the episode is Curse. And here's some context, it has to do with this character right here, Carlotta. I'm showing a PNG of them on screen, and it has to do with their legs, okay? Roll that footage and let's see if you guys can spot the mistake. No, Boo Boo Bear, you go first. Oh, babe, I'd never go before you. You're my number one. Well, I gotta go number two. Lin Lab with a steal. Did you guys catch it? Well, when Lynn shoves herself in front of the line for the bathroom in the clips you guys just saw, Carlotta over here has no legs in a few frames. Like I'm zooming in right here and they're just missing their legs. Like the legs are just not there. There's no legs. The animators just didn't draw them, which is hilarious. And let's head back to good old fashioned SpongeBob. I got something for you. Ah, the sweet smell of payday. I can't accept your money, Mr. Krabs. Grilling is my passion. What is this? 
You're making me pay you to stand at the cash register? We've got to unite as workers and demand the respect we deserve from the boss. In fact, you and I should go on strike. And we're back to the spongy goodness. This episode we're going to be covering now is Squid on Strike. And this episode is all about Squidward going on strike. It's time for mistakes, guys. Pay close attention. And here's a hint. It has to do with the Krusty Krab sign, the letters of the sign. All right, roll the footage. I'm glad you saw it our way. Mr. Crab. <laughs> well, see it work. Yeah, this one's interesting. You guys may need me to explain it, so like, listen closely, all right? So in the scene you guys just saw with the disassembled Krusty Krab, where Mr. Krabs is about to walk outside, some of the letters of the Krusty Krab sign, for example, K, which is attached to the clam, we also have S, Y, and R, and A that have fallen onto the ground. However, if you look over here, there's an extra letter T behind the clam, which is a mistake. In Krusty, there's only one T, so if the sign is fallen apart, there would never be two T's. Like, look at the sign while it's intact. As you can see, there's only one T. So in this shot right here, why is there an extra T? Totally a mistake. And guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. But click this video right here for more SpongeBob mistakes. There's a whole bunch in this video, guys. And between me and you, the mistakes in this video are even crazier than the mistakes I just talked about in today's video. So click it, do it, and I'll get you a crusty Krab pizza. And a massive shout out to the Grapple Gang. I love you guys. And a bigger shout out to the Premier Gang, everybody here. I'll make sure to come to premieres more, by the way, but I love you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Click this video.